And Homer J. Nick here with a community update on Season 11 for Diablo 3 on consoles. It has been an interesting week. Let us check the leaderboards for Greater Rifts and Softcore 4 Man. And we can see that the top group has cleared 115. Uh, this week, uh, this member of the group uh, posted uh, a video of their 115 clear and posted on Reddit that they had done so. Uh, this attracted the attention of a few players and on inspecting this character's gear suspicions were raised. This character has one, two, three, four primals after only three weeks of season 11 including the very hard to get Primal Compass Rose and Primal Traveler's Pledge. In the Reddit chat uh, an older member of this group from last season then posted that these guys were using exploits last season and were most likely exploiting again. So many were surprised when the user with four primals posted this message on Reddit. So he fully admits to using an exploit to gain an advantage. I message this player uh, and he makes some valid points uh, and some points I disagree with. But let us cl address and clarify just what exploit this player is referring to. Many have messaged me uh, asking me to create a video on this exploit and try and get it fixed. As most of you know I created a several videos during season 10 on exploits within the console version of Diablo 3 in an attempt to get greater exposure to the exploits so that Blizzard patched them for season 11. In all credit to Blizzard, every bug report that the community posted and the ones in my video were indeed fixed for season 11. So I reported that we were good for season 11 with no major exploits. However, as I mentioned in my week 1 summary video of season 11 for the PS4, there are still exploits in Diablo 3 on consoles. I consider them time consuming, not as effective as the previous ones in season 10, thus I expected a cleaner season 11. So why do I not create a new video on this exploit that this player refers to? Well there's a good reason why I don't. All the other exploits that uh, were in the game for season 10 were all to do with the inner mechanics of Diablo 3 so that Blizzard were the ones that could fix or patch them. Hence why I created the videos, got exposure uh, and they got patched. But the two current exploits that exist in season 11 for Diablo 3 and consoles are in no way related to the inner mechanics of Diablo 3. Rather, it's an issue with the consoles themselves and where the save file resides. Thus, there's nothing that Blizzard can do about these two exploits. So what would be the point in detailing how it's done? For the record, I did send a bug report in Day 1 of Season 11 to Blizzard detailing both of these exploits, but I'm aware that nothing can be done. So I'm not going to detail how the exploits work, or the mechanics of them, even though I know a lot of people know about them. It will just make Season 11 worse. So that is the situation with Diablo 3 on consoles at the moment for Season 11. There are two exploits in the game, one that affects hardcore play, and the other where a player can get primals a lot easier than PC players, and Blizzard can do nothing about these exploits. Let's talk about uh, a few other points that the Reddit user makes. So he says that there are loads of people exploiting, there's many people with primal weapons uh, and that's all a bit suspicious considering I'm only into week 3 uh, of season 11 and in my weekly summary videos I certainly do point out how many primals each player has in those top spots. Uh, but when I message the player it's interesting, he, he says check the leaderboards um, and softcore for, for, for uh, 4 man. And if you notice, the groups under him, well, they too have got one, two, three, four primals as well. And so this player says, well, all the other players are, are exploiting as well, so his only option to stay top of the leaderboard was to, to exploit as well. That's pretty sad that that is the case, where we have multiple groups and multiple people and top players using exploits. He also says that having primals does not mean as much as having Paragon. I completely disagree with that. This game is all about the math. Main stat from Paragon is important, 
And it's nowhere near as good as a perfectly rolled primal weapon or that perfect primal traveller's pledge and compass rose. Getting 20% elemental, socket, 10% critical hit chance and 100% critical hit damage. D t to beat that with just Paragon main stat would take a crap ton of Paragon t t to beat that kind of rolls. So, no, Primals means more th than Paragons for sure. If Paragon was king, then all you need is Paragon to win. So why is it all these players are exploiting the game to get Primals then? Primals does mean an awful lot. He then goes on to say that PC players don't really care about Primals as much as they care about Paragon. Well, have a look at this video posted by the popular PC streamer Big Daddy Den. Let me go guys. Straight away man, Jess. Yes, so he goes mental at finding a primal weapon. It's a huge DPS increase for him. 5% he says. So whilst there are very complicated builds with pinpoint rotations in them, most average players who have a lot of primals will beat a skillful player who has more paragon but no primals. It's simply because the math behind the primals means that the average player can do more than the skillful player, even in a group setting. This was highlighted last season in some of the leaderboards on the PS4. For instance, the Hardcore Wizards uh, leaderboards, the top two were clear exploiters with uh, it, over eight primals in their builds. And they beat the more skillful, legit players uh, underneath them, which was sad to see. So no, I disagree that Paragon is king. Primals are king. That's why people are exploiting them. But what makes me really sad is, whilst I don't know this player, who uh, admitted to exploiting several uh, of my own PSN friends do, and they state that this group is a very skillful group. They're very skillful players. They can run Diablo 3 in a group efficiently. These guys share knowledge in how to do a four-man group as efficient as possible. He didn't need to exploit. He's good enough. It's sad to see that uh, these types of players have exploited. And, you know, the console community of Diablo 3 gets a lot of flack from the PC community. Uh, we're uh, the console version is just full of cheaters and exploiters, so what's the point in playing it? Well, this kind of experience just adds weight uh, to that argument. And that's a real pity, because I think Season 12 could be a great season. I think a lot of players could come back to Diablo 3 on console, if I hope what Blizzard are going to do next. See, I think that Necro is OP at the moment. And I think Blizzard will need to address that. And I can't see them nerfing the, the Necro. I think they've got to uh, buff all six classes to match the power of the Necro. After only three weeks of Season 11, the Necro is doing 111 GR solo. If Blizzard could make the other classes match that, then a lot of players might pick up Season 12. You can imagine uh, a Barb being able to do that kind of similar power as a Necro, or a Monk, players who currently cannot get anywhere near that kind of level of GRs. So yeah, so Season 12 could be good if Blizzard did buff all six classes. It's going to be a shame though if there's exploits widely used in the console version of Diablo 3. But I understand, this, this Reddit user says he doesn't like doing bounties for crafting materials, so if he's going to do something that can skip that, then he's going to do it. And many people say that they don't have the time to take all seven classes and get a top build. They don't have time to do bounties to get the crafting material. I fully understand that. That's what non-season's for. Go and play non-season. Go and duplicate crafting materials. Go and get all seven top builds for all seven classes uh, very quickly and test them out and play them and enjoy them. That's what you can do in non-season without affecting any online competitiveness um, or, or, or leaderboards. You can do that in non-season without affecting anybody else's game. 
But seasons are about competition. It's about being legit. It's about being on a level playing field and we're all competing at the same time. Guys, don't exploit in this game. Don't exploit in season 11 or 12. Because currently, these two exploits cannot be fixed by Blizzard. Okay, I'm done. I will be reviewing the leaderboards uh, this Friday for the end of week 3 of season 11. And this time I'll also be including um, some statistics from our fellow Xbox One players. Let's see how the PS4 community and the Xbox One community are doing in Season 11 for Diablo 3. So stay, stay tuned for that video. But I'm Homer Genic, a little saddened and despondent, and I'm out of here.